I remember Michelle Obama when she first came into office and anything she wore, she would wear a lot of, especially African-American designers. And she would always shout them out. And then they in turn would get the credit and the name that they deserve and other people would want to work for them. Work yeah, with them. That, that was way after some of the times when I had some major you know, work that I had done. So by the time Michelle Obama came around in 2018, there was a certain awareness. And especially with her, thank God, that she knew a lot of unknown designers or, or designers of color needed that shout out. And she had the leverage to shout it out. And I guess um, they benefit from that, okay? So prior to that, because you have to remember, I came in the game in the 1980s. So between the 1980s and let's say 2015 or so, I mean, let's say, it just wasn't really the thing to do. So, you know, it just became something that we became aware of. Um, but most of the time it was just a political game that people were doing behind the scenes and you had no control of it. How do you call a uh, InStyle magazine and tell them you left my name off of uh, Shaka Khan's outfit or something? You know, that's just not, that's not possible. When did you open up? When, when, did, when did it happen for you? When did you start seeing your name uh, appearing, getting the credit that you deserve? Mm, maybe over time when, like I said, when it was starting to be accepted, the black designers were relevant. Um, you know, then people were opening up more to new stories and new, you know, because after a while, I think that's what's happened recently is there's so much that has already been given credit in terms of all the original designers that have already been known, right? So at some point, it starts shifting, which we're seeing now, where new stories, new people, and they're interested in that because we need the freshness and the diversity and the inclusiveness in our creative fields. Um, so it's just a matter of the times, I think. When you were going through that, were there other white designers uh, that made it more difficult for you? Mm, I never experienced that, no. I just never got the credit for the beautiful and amazing work I was doing. I was like literally coming like one after the other and it wasn't just one celebrity. So I worked for many, many black celebrities and I used to be asked when I would get an interview or whatever, they'd ask me, do you have any uh, Caucasian celebrities? And I'm like, but I have this, the biggest celebrity, eight celebrities in the world that are black. that run the whole entertainment business, basically. I mean, I, that's just who I service. So it almost was like, because you didn't have, I guess the diversity according to what their, their view was, it just kind of didn't match up. So I became something that was not really common. Wow, I, I'm, I'm just curious why it didn't, why it mattered so much to them that you would have to actually design something for a white celebrity. I know the answer to the question. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially when the black celebrities that once again, like you're designing for, are the biggest celebrities in the industry. You know, like you said. Like in the world. <laughs> world. <laughs> Personalities, different celebrities, different divas that oh. you had. Give me an example. Give us uh, the audience uh, an idea of what it was like having to work with those different personalities and how you adjusted your personalities for that. Well, I was very strong in what I did. I was very confident. I worked in excellence. My work was always fit and the designs were always amazing. So I just basically would um, basically share with them what I was doing. They believed in me and supported me. And I just continued to drive it home. You know, it was just a matter of just working and doing what I had to do.